take two because it's just the way that the day is rolling. All right, so in my very first video, I had talked about some uh, two novels in particular that I believe are very relevant uh, for what we're going through today. Oh, by the way, if I didn't say hello, hello, uh, thank you for joining me. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. So the first book that um, I believe is relevant, and by no means are these the only books that are re relevant. These are just the most recent reads that I've read that are relevant. Uh, the very first one is The Giver by Lois Lowry. And the second one is Never Let Me Go by Kazuo Ishiguro. Um, and I actually read them in the opposite order. I read Never Let Me Go first. Uh, so, I had flip-flopped on which one to talk about as far as like the world and, and, and how society is and, and all of that. Uh, I was going to start with Never Let Me Go and then I went and decided to start with The Giver. And my hands are actually really not dirty, it's just paint. I was doing nail art and it'll come off later. I, my nails need to dry more. So, anyway, um, back to the topic. So, with The Giver... We follow a young boy. I'm going to try to keep this as spoiler free as possible. His name, I believe, is Jonas. I hope that's right. Um, and we follow him in his world. And his world is absolutely nothing like ours. Not even right now. Uh, obviously, there is control right now with quarantine and isolation and things that are locked down and what you can and cannot do and, and so many rules. In his world, it is much much worse to the point where the population not only cannot remember or have they don't have, they have no inkling of what it used to be like but they've actually forgotten some elemental things that are in nature and again I don't want to spoil you know what this is because it's it's kind of an important um, thing I believe in the book and so with Jonas's world Everything is decided for them, um, as, as far as from what I can remember. So, you know, th things that we take for granted. I believe even their meals were decided for them. Um, I believe they were left on their front doorstep, and then when they were done consuming their meal, then it was later picked up. So obviously the, the wife, she didn't have to do dishes, which in theory sounds great. Um, I know a lot of people love ordering food. It's great. Uh, but this population where Jonas lived in his village, or it really to me it felt more like a city, small city, um, they didn't have that option. That is just the way that it was. However, it was the same thing across pretty much everything. They were, they were instructed on which vocabulary words that they were allowed to use, appropriate responses questions that were or were not appropriate, um, how to express feelings, um, the, the, the age of adultness as nowhere near 18, I can tell you that right now and I don't believe that's going to be any kind of a spoiler. And so, you know, as these citizens are growing up, you know, once they reach that level of becoming more adult, so I guess puberty, for, for, for the only word that really that, that could be, um, they start having to, you know, um, monitor those hormones, do things to suppress certain things, and it's just, it's just really sad. And, and there's no guarantee that one will be able to find a mate. That's also something that is decided for them the same thing as having children. Children are decided for a married couple, right? And so, Jonas in his book, or Jonas, while reading this book, once he's been given his job, been given his job, which again, they don't choose their job. Uh, once he's given his job, he's learning about what his friends and his family and everyone that he knows and this whole society that he's grown up in like they they really don't know and he's like learning all these things and it's 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 giving him all of these different different emotions and, and, and it's hard for him to process and uh, 
it, it just really kind of struck me as, you know, what it would be like, like for our children, like what if this does last for years, okay? And what I mean by what if, I'm, I don't want that to happen. I don't want that to happen for not just my family. I don't want to happen for like anyone's family or for generations to come. You know, but what if something like that happened where, where things just got so ingrained in us where it was always six feet apart and always wearing masks and always social distancing, that would become a normal that maybe in 10 years, my children's children, they wouldn't know any different. And then, well, if that's the case, how do people like young, young people like in their teens or 20s or even 30s or 40s or 50s or you know senior citizens that have lost you know their spouse how are they able to like how will how would they if things remain the same plane uh if things remain the same how would they be able to meet up you know obviously we have uh internet dating right that's still a thing i'm pretty sure i know there's like tinder or a swipe thing um, i've been married for like 25 years so I'm kind of like not up and up with the, the social dating, but you know, just, just thinking as a what if, what if it did stay the same where things don't go back and now we're just like in this like new normal, you know, and, and like how would one date? And, and, and some of you might be thinking that doesn't matter. We have a biggest, a bigger thing to worry about, which is a virus. I get it. My parents are elderly. I have aunts and uncles that are elderly. I have friends that have major um, immune issues. I have friends who either they are going through cancer treatment right now or their spouses are. I have a problem myself where I'm considered at risk. Even though too many, I look healthy and I look young and I look thin, so they just assume that I'm healthy. Um, but actually, in 2010, I got really sick, almost died, and I don't know that I'll ever be the same. And I've been recovering for 10 years, but it affected my neurological system, including my heart, the ability to regulate temperature. Um, I had to learn how to like read and count, and, and, and I don't want to go into it, but I'm just saying, like, I don't want anyone to think that I don't care about those that can be affected by the virus, because I do. However, with life, there is risk. So every time we have a risk, does that mean we're gonna be restricted on what we can and cannot do? I mean, even the phases reopening are like, it's not just for COVID or the coronavirus. I'm recording. I'll be in in a minute. Uh, one of my one of my teens. Uh, so, uh, lost my train of thought. So like, so the, the reopening plan is not just for COVID, it's for like all respiratory illness symptoms. Well, that can be something like asthma. It can be allergies. I know someone that when, and it's a, and it's a child, it's a teenager, when they're around a dog, um, they get like severe respiratory. And if it's not caught early with like um, different antihistamines and stuff, it can actually turn into like a pretty bad case of bronchitis. And so, if it's not just COVID, well then, there it goes again, compressor. If it's not just COVID, then are we going to have this like repetitive cycle of being told what we can and cannot do? And uh, that's kind of daunting, you know? And so, you know, I don't, you know, I don't know. You know, we went into lockdown two months ago and I say two months and I'm, I'm in the state of Florida I live specifically in Miami I think I mentioned that in my driving around for the first time in two months when I was just acting like a fool because it was so weird for me to be out that I was just like nuts and yeah I did have wine but it was like actually like an hour it was like a glass you know an hour before we'd left and my friend was fine I was the one that had had wine but you know so I just I just wonder I wonder about that so and many people are just fine sitting in their homes and doing nothing, ordering food in, deliveries, you know. Um, and I don't want that life for my children. And one of the reasons why, again, goes back to 
in order to live, there is a risk. There's a risk for everything. Okay, I did not get sick, <laughs> you know, in, in normal fashion. I got sick walking in the grass. Okay, so does that mean that now I should raise my children to be afraid of playing in the grass? And, and you might be thinking, well, how did you get sick walking in the grass? Well, um, I was outside in, in my yard and there are vectors. You've got, uh, obviously you've got the mosquitoes, you have ticks, you have ants, and um, fleas. So something bit me and I, I, I got very sick for a very long time. So, you know, I never saw that coming. Uh, another thing is I like to swim in the ocean. Every time I go into the ocean, I know that I am at risk for being attacked by a shark, being stung by a jellyfish, man of war probably, which is worse, not as deadly probably, but as a jelly, as, especially box jelly. Um, and then riptides. My son almost drowned in a riptide. Thankfully, my husband was able to like pick him up and like throw him to shore. Um, it's it's not easy and it's it's not fun, you know, navigating life, knowing that we take chances. Um, I've had friends killed, right? Um, just driving, they were hit by somebody else. So, you know, again, not trying to to downplay the seriousness seriousness of the virus, but there are other ways I believe to combat what we're dealing with I don't know what they are but I just I, I don't think this is the right answer and sorry if you disagree but that's just my opinion all right so now we're gonna switch to never let me go never let me go focuses on three friends I don't know if their names are important for the video but I'm gonna go ahead and just name them out we follow Ruth we follow I believe her name was Kathy and Tommy there are three friends that are raised in a boarding school named Halsham and I imagine Halsham to be this like beautiful you know kind of like mansion-esque type environment and the children are raised very strictly on what they cannot cannot do. They have to log in where they go, when they come back, etc. They have to have so much time outside to play. They're also given like, you know, regular health checks and their vitamins daily and on and on and on. However, they're not allowed to leave the grounds. Like there's this gate and there has been a, uh, a story you know a legend that children had went past that gate and bad things happened to them and so the children just they, they don't leave uh, and then when they get to an older age they move from the actual boarding school into something called the cottages which is kind of like run down but they're able to mingle a little bit more with normal people and um, these normal people which I mean by like delivery people um, people that just come and go like taking things and delivering things or whatever you know they they react to them in a very standoffish like I'm afraid of afraid of you kind of way and that's because they're not the same and just like the giver with the Jonas's population, the same thing for these boarding students. They have been raised for a purpose, which they find out very, at a very young, tender age, what that purpose is. They'll never be doctors. They'll never be moms. They'll never go to the, you know, they'll never fly to the moon, etc. They have a purpose that has been completely planned out for them and most people either love or hate the book they either love or hate the film I've seen both I actually started with the film because I didn't even know that there was a book and I even asked the question when they found this out when they found out that this is what their life was going to consist of why didn't they fight back like, why didn't they take a stand? And I'm not here trying to promote violence. I don't even go there because I'm not. 
but it wasn't really until I started having to deal with the isolation, the quarantine and all of that, that I kind of understood because it's kind of like frog and like hot water or like warm water that's slowly being like tempted up. One just becomes accustomed and used to how their life is. And although I've always been a little bit more of an introvert and I'm super happy staying home, at the same time, I want my freedom to go to the beach currently closed. And they've told us that if it does open, swimming is not allowed, which uh, honestly, that just makes no sense to me. Like, please, can I just like take a parachute and like just drop me off in the ocean somewhere, like not too far from shore. And I just won't be around, I won't be around anyone. I just want to just swim. But uh, no, that's not an option. So why didn't these, why didn't these kids escape? Why didn't they try to like um, fight against the system? They found a possible loophole, also a rumor very similar to can't go past the gate because something's bad gonna something bad is gonna happen to you kids if you go past you know the your your borders right can't go past your gate borders otherwise something's bad is gonna happen to you um, so it was kind of similar they found like a rumor loophole and they tried to get a waiver um, and it 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 didn't work and so. You know, I wonder like what like what do we do if things don't change? And again, I'm not siding for violence. I don't like violence personally. I don't even like violent movies. Like um, after I read Agatha Christie's and there were none, I gave it to my mom, and that was like the first like I guess murder mystery that I read at least in a very like decades. That was the first one that I that I that I read because I don't like horror and I don't like murder and I don't like violence like of any kind but now that all of this is going on I'm thinking about well how can we maintain what is safe but yet at the same time exercising our our rights like our constitutional rights have they been revoked and we just don't know as far as I know, we're not under like actual martial law, and I think even then we still have some rights. I could be wrong. I haven't I haven't taken um, civics in about a year, and, and I've lost a lot of it. So this, these were just some thoughts, you know. And I understand why people were really upset with, with the film and the book, and why didn't these people fight back? But I wonder how many people that have read the book and or watched the film are very complacent to just sit in their homes and wait. You know, we were told it was going to be two weeks and then we were told it was going to be another two weeks. And now we're looking at maybe another week or two. Now the marinas are open, people can boat. That's great. The golf cart, or you can golf, but you only can have one person on a golf cart. And it, 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 it this is what makes no sense. Two people cannot be on the golf cart, even if they live in the same household. Meaning, if a husband and wife want to golf together, they can, but they cannot sit in the golf cart together. Does that make any sense? Because if it does, please put in a comment and explain to me why my thinking is completely illogical. Because to me, that just makes absolutely no sense. Um, I don't know what else I want to say. I'm sure that after I get this uploaded, I will have remembered something that I wanted to talk about. I just know that I do want to keep people safe. But at the same time, living comes with risk. Experiencing life comes with risk. Eating foods comes with risk. I can't even tell you how many times I almost freaking died choking when I was a kid. Does that mean I don't eat? You know and it's just it kind of boggles my mind because it's like I mean I get it I understand I understand the underlining principle of wanting to keep people safe but there are so many things that are just as dangerous that we're not even talking about that kill just as many people if not more that we're still not talking about and I get that we don't have immunity for this and that the symptoms and severity are all across the board and then there's like there's like there's like absolutely no way that we can like figure out like well who's gonna get sick and who's not gonna get sick i get that but how long do we have to 
stay in our homes for safety until that's figured out. I mean, they're talking about a vaccine, but they haven't made a vaccine like for AIDS. They haven't made a vaccine yet for like SARS-1 or MERS, which are also coronaviruses, not AIDS, yet the SARS-1 and, and MERS. And that's been like, what, over 10 years at least, and, and they haven't been able to do it. And, 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 but yet there's already one that's very close to being tested on people. I, I don't know. It's, um, it's just, it's just a weird time, you know, and I just wanted to talk about it because, you know, you know, I wondered why didn't they fight back, you know, and never let me go. And I'm not fighting back, you know, um, and then I, and then I wondered, you know, with the giver, like, well, how do these people get so like this and this and this and this and this? How did that happen? Kind of similar to with, with, with them, um, never let me go. So the giver was like, everything was, everything was planned out for them. And it was also a never let me go. Um, but they did have some freedoms. Um, they did have to like log in. In the movie, it portrays like a wrist thingy that they have to like scan in and scan out. And I believe in the, in the, in the novel, they had to like log it in and out everywhere they went. You know, I, <sighs> Like, how long? Like, how long? And I don't have the answer. And I'm taking it day by day. And that's all that I can do. And I pray for wisdom and I pray for discernment. And I pray for the leaders of our country and the leaders of other countries. And I pray for the strength to go by, go day by day because it's, it's weird, especially now with like summer coming. It's like, man, like I, I want kids to be able to swim and like go skateboarding at parks and, and play in a playground. And um, I don't know if that's, I don't really know if that's going to happen anytime soon. Um, so again, these two books are not the only two books that are relevant for today. There are many more, um, specifically 1984. But if you have any other books besides 1984 and the two that I've already mentioned, The Giver and Never Let Me Go, please put them in the, con uh, in the comments because I would really like to know what books that you feel are relevant for today with what we're going through with lockdown. And I'm going to go ahead and sign off on this video because we're just over 22 minutes long and I thought I was going to do like a 10 minute video and I just like ranted. So uh, it, it, it can happen. So um, I wish you all the best. Stay safe. Uh, stay safe and um, I'll be back eventually, hopefully soon. Bye.